natural calm relaxed yeah so candidacy people yeah we want honest politics we want <laughs> this just makes you laugh doesn't it even saying that honest politics what does that mean <laughs> do you know what i mean i can't even speak i can't even say it without laughing now for some time probably decades probably going back longer than that hundreds of years uh politicians have been blaming each other right oh it's their fault it's their fault it's his fault it's their fault when, when you was in power blah 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 and i've watched bbc parliament and to be honest it's quite boring you know there isn't really anything enlightening there uh, occasionally you'll get some lords information as regards to the new laws that are coming out you know um, but generally speaking they're not publicized in advance so that you can do something about it because as a person as a, as a human as a member of society you're allowed to actually go to lords and appeal yeah you know like in the local votes there was a vote recently wasn't there um to change the election powers and there was no publicity on it so the turnout was very poor um and what that would have done is is it would have given people the power to kick out their mp so obviously they didn't really want that did they now so but afterwards, after they vote, um, as they call it, the joke, um, they publicised heavily saying that the people voted to keep the system as it was. Now, only 31% turned up or something ridiculous, so that's not the people, is it? Seven, most of the people said bollocks, quite frankly, didn't they? Um, sorry for the swearing, you know, appropriate use of language, in my, as far as I'm concerned. It's not an angry statement, is it? You know, it's just what it is. If you, if you look at the leadership and what they're doing to this country and the people in it that are suffering, you know, the vulnerable people, homeless people, children, you know, it just goes on and on. Now, so what do we do about it? Well, we joined the Money Free Party. That's what I did. I joined the Money Free Party. Um, hopefully, a couple of days' time, 24th, I'll be a candidate um, to run for a local election as a councillor because... I'm tired of the blame game, you know, whoever seems, you know, oh, you scored an own goal, I scored an own goal, whoever seems to sc score the least own goal, goals actually wins the election, you know, but where's the solutions to the problem, you know, how are we going to feed the homeless people, you know, where's the resources for it, where's the food, well, I'll tell you where it is, it gets thrown away every day by supermarkets, but because of profit, because of profit, they throw it away, yeah, there's people starving, where's the justice in that? doesn't make any sense well because of money because of greed come on so as a, as a human being i want people like yourselves normal people around the country to stand up and uh, for local elections you know because a lot of us have got something to say haven't we you know oh well, i'd do it like this i'd do it like that well go on then come on let's do it you know just stand up let's take the country back no not by arms no not 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 by being lazy you know, by taking pro be proactive, being proactive, actually standing up for your rights as a person, you know, and speaking your truth from your heart. And stand up for your neighbours. You know, there's loads of injustice going on and we can change it together uh, as people. You know, this is our country. We do live here. This is our planet uh, on the wider scheme of things. You know, there's so much division, isn't there? You know, I don't like you because you support a different football team or you're from a different country or speak a different language or your skin's a different colour. But we all live on the same planet, don't we? We all live on the same planet. And regardless of your conditioning, what beliefs you might have about certain individuals or certain types of people, you know, it's only learnt, isn't it? You know, if you lived with them for some time, maybe you'd find that they're quite nice. But you won't know that because of the people around you, your environment. So be open to different new new ways of being. Be open to different ways of life. You know, because that's exciting, isn't it? Different different things. You know, it's boring, isn't it? Don't you find it? Didn't you say it was boring? Well, I I don't get bored much. I am bored of blame game. I must must confess. In politics, that's that's something that. Right, like, a lot of the stuff that's come through my door at the moment is saying, "Vote for me, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me." It's all based on blame. Look what they did wrong vote for me it's not very you know ha like look at the flooding yeah vote for me because they didn't fix it but where's the solution to the flooding you know why is the solution i'm not saying i've got one i'm just asking the question where's the solution that captures the rainwater puts it into the water table so that we can drink it in the summer you know every year for the last decade or so this country's had hose pipe bans and stuff 
and it's had flooding in all over the country. You know, people insurance won't pay because it's an act of God. You know, the government's having to borrow money, significant money, considering we're in austerity right now. Yeah, they're having to borrow significant amount of funds to pay and cover this flooding problem. Where are they going to get that money from? They're going to have to borrow it. Now that means even more austerity. Yeah, but as people, surely if we got together. You know, we could go and sort the flooding out ourselves, could we not? There's plenty of human beings on this in our country, you know, but we don't think about it, do we? We rely on them for our basic human needs. We rely on the state to supply us with a job or benefits, money, so that we can eat, survive, live, you know? Who's going to provide your basic human needs if the government wasn't there? Who's going to feed your children if a supermarket can't sell you food? You know, you see, this is the thing. Ultimately, we are going to become a money-free world because we have to to survive. Because all that money does, all that money does, is create a world in which you want more than him or her or the next person. You know, fairness rather than equality, you see. It's fair that a homeless person starves to death. He freezes on the street. He's a bum. He's a drug addict. Who cares about him? Really? Do you? Well, maybe you'll say no. I don't. Well, as a human being, I care for them quite considerably. You know, I don't. You don't know their story or why they're there, and none of that should matter, should it? Really, the person. If you see somebody suffering, if you see somebody suffering, should you not offer a hand of assistance? And this is supposed to be a Christian country, and I'm not going to brave on about God. But to be Christian is to be charitable, regardless of religion. Is to be charitable, is to give, unconditionally, isn't it? And that's what's missing. You know, people walk along the street and they they kind of sometimes they their heads down and just smile at people. Walk down the road and just give a smile. You'll be amazed at the smiles you get back, you know, just a little smile. Um, I believe that we need in this country to stand up for ourselves we need to be able to provide our own basic needs food energy yes heat energy electrical power energy you know we need those things yet yeah, they're all third party influenced aren't they they're all paid for by cash they're all controlled by uh profit and supply and demand which is why our bills go up and down don't they so how do you budget in the summer and the winter, you know, on on, on a uh, minimum income, or or even if you're quite wealthy, you, you still need to know what money's coming in and out each month, don't you? You know, but you can't actually predict what your electric bill or or heating bill is because it's bloody random, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. It's uh, something o'clock. We'll just put the price up. It's summer, you know. But if they invested in solar panels on every property in the country, if our government did that, would we not be able to sustain our own energy system? They have the money. They've been stuffing houses full of, um, what is it, insulation to, you know, to try and plaster a hole in the completely inefficient gas central heating systems that they're still building in new houses today, I have you know. I think that should be illegal because that doesn't sustain. That's not... Econ e economical is it what does economy mean anyway what does economy mean to you does it mean to waste frivolously or does it mean to be resourceful to save stuff you know to not waste it to be economical with it you know a family if you ask a family what it means to be economical it means about you know choosing one product or another because you can't afford to necessarily buy it or you've got to feed your kids next week or you've got to get shoes but when you ask that these mainstream politicians what it is to be economical it's all about profit isn't it how much profit can we make but how does that heat your home or feed your kids you know it doesn't does it so these are all questions that are going on in my mind and i i want people to stand up and join the money free party in the united kingdom as a candidate you know, regardless of your political standing or what you believe, you know, do it for yourself and your and your people around you. You know, there's an opportunity here for us to actually make a difference politically. We can change the laws now. You know, and all we have to do, you get need 10 people. That's what you need. You need 10 people to sign a piece of paper. OK, it's a nomination paper. I've got one over here, actually, with several signatures because I'm almost there myself. 
A lo local government election nomination paper is what you require. Now, I can't show you it because it's got people's names on it for privacy. Um, and it's a 1A. And you can get it from your council, actually. You can just walk in and ask for it. And ask your friends, neighbours, you know, have a chat with some people. Get ten names. You, know, you need um, a proposer and a seconder. And it can be anybody. The only terms and conditions, really, is that they've got an election number. They're on the electoral register. Um, obviously, at the moment, it's a good time to do it because people are getting ready for local elections in, in the country. And next year, of course, we've got a general election. So we've got that too coming along. Um, so just do it. You know, some people might think I'm crazy. I'm just a single dad. I'm trying to uh, defend my honour and look after my kids the best I can. Um, it seems to me that certain uh, services uh, can break laws. Um, especially to do with human rights, like the government seems to have broken laws as regards to war crime. The, um, you, I, as a disabled person, I've not been able to report a disability hate crime uh, because it involves uh, child services. Now, obviously, there's no smoke without fire, and they wouldn't be involved in my life if there hadn't been a problem. But disability hate is something that many people don't know about, you see. You see, all it is is a prejudice of your perception. You see, I don't look disabled necessarily, so you could prejudice against me because of that. You know, I have sometimes a tone in my voice which people often find it angry or aggressive. You know, I live with fibromyalgia, whatever that means. I don't know. I do the best I can to be as strong as I can and spread messages of peace and love and awareness to people of knowledge and power, freedom of speech, you know. Also, those of you that are truth sayers um, in the United Kingdom that may not know this yet, the gagging order is coming up. It's been done by the Lords. House of Lords have passed it. Now, forget the dates. You can look it up, gagging order. Um, find out your, your truths because, obviously, memory with all these laws, it, it doesn't always serve correctly. So always check your information. You know, just because I say it or someone says it doesn't mean it's so. doesn't mean it's not so. Be optimistic, yeah, if it sounds good. Be open-minded. Uh, don't judge a book by its cover because that, that is something that will kick you in the butt. So get out there, speak your truths. The gagging order could stop you from doing that because the intricacies of it are a little bit complicated. So you should read it yourself if you're interested. But pretty much in a nutshell for the general pub public is that, for example, our, um, our MP in this area... Um, has resigned, shall we say. Um, and after September, I do believe, if my dates are correct, I can't say anything about that. I couldn't mention that because of the general election coming up. For, I think it's a year bef a year coverage, like six months before and six months after, or something like that. Please check the information. The government information is so bloody complicated. You know, why is the simpleness? But they make it complicated to trick you and make it hard for us to do. You know, even this form, as easy as it is to get 10 people to sign it, the language on it is very, um, oh, I don't know, I can't even think of a word, actually, but it's quite confusing, and it comes with a whole bunch of rules and regulations which you have to comply to, um, which is obviously there to stop us from moving forwards with, with you know, freedom. Um, anyway, candidates and members of parliament, apparently, and councillors and such things, um, have certain exemptions, I do believe, from the gagging order. So, as generally speaking, you would have to, um, to become a candidate of any party, you'd have to go to an AGM meeting, you'd have to be voted in by their party, you'd need to be, you know, applicable with their policies, you'd have to sign certain documents to agree to things. There's many, many things that, you know, many, freedom's taken away to be able to even go for it. You know, imagine trying to get into the mainstream parties as yourself because you wanted something to prove. You wanted, you wanted some truth done, you wanted to change the world for a better place. It's very difficult to do so. But the Money Free Party... It's only been around for a year, and we were talking about resources, equal share, uh, looking after our own human needs. You know, they are resources, aren't they? Food, shelter, energy, heating, electricity. We can't provide those for ourselves, and that's what we want to do. Because once we can provide those for ourselves, the rest of it, we don't need them, do we? Obviously, we need policing and schooling and, and such things and healthcare, you know? Um... 
but we need to be able to provide our own human needs across the whole planet then everybody's everybody's got that in that without money so that people can live and survive you know and be free to do and be what they are so if you want to look into the exemption from the gagging order uh, become a candidate with a money free party um, we've got loads of spots open across the country and we welcome you uh, if you will, if you're into freedom of speech if you are a person that believes that equality means everyone and not some people if you believe that we should be able to provide our own human needs you know electricity and food especially in this country it's all third party we're, we're fracking destroying our country's water supplies with poison please check the information on that because there's loads of research on that you know the government's failing on its traffic light warning system check that out on hm gov yeah go there read the documents on the traffic light system on fracking uh the government documentation they're failing and that the coast off liverpool loads of earthquakes going on uh join the uk anti-fracking groups because basically they're poisoning our country taking our gas selling it to whoever who sells it back to us hello how much did that cost you know to implement well, the money that it cost to implement could have been used to, uh, for example, put solar panels on um, the elderly people's homes that had their cold weather payments stopped. And then they would never have to pay for electricity again, bless them. Don't you think it's fair? But it's not, you know, it's not equal. But, mm, but wouldn't it be equal if everyone could do that, eh? But we've got to start somewhere, haven't we? So we start with the most vulnerable people. There is a system called kickstarter.com, which will fund local sustainable creative and design uh, projects. You know, I want to promote this a little bit, and I'll, hopefully someone will connect up, because I'm good with ideas but and organising. You know, get, get the boots on the ground. I need some people with some boots on the ground. So allotments are going. Uh, government's got plans to basically uh, build houses on them because there isn't low-cost housing apparently well that's because they're empty uh, selling at 500 grand in my area um, much more than anyone could afford above the basic wage so how about your community yes you gets together to save your allotment go to kickstarter.com create a project yeah get the children involved get the homeless people involved let them grow their own food let them support themselves. Give them some hope, you know. Because I tell you, it'll make you feel good that you saved the allotment. It'll make the homeless people feel good that they can be a part of society, not a dropout. Because I tell you, I've been homeless and on the street, and I appreciate this this humble abode. And I might even be homeless again shortly. So, due to benefits, you know, uh, being cut. Apparently, it takes 12 weeks for them to be sorted. Uh, but I've only got 29 days, or that was a few weeks back. Anyway, I'm not really so concerned about that because it was a paperwork issue. So it is something that that that, that can be uh, I can sort personally. But there are people that would be in this situation that might not know how to fix it. You know, I'm still a little dubious whether I'm going to be okay or not. However, it is what it is, right? So I'm a single dad. I'm registered disabled, uh, and I am going to be a candidate for the money free party to help this area specifically with accessibility and disability um discrimination uh child abuse from services uh, I, I'm, I, and schools and things like that and, and child abuse is a strong word and i don't use it lightly believe me as a father of three and a granddad yes i look very young for that but anyway um i use that word you know with caution um but the emotional abuse that social services and schools and the trauma that children go through you know because their hair's cut too short they get put into isolation social isolation is emotional abuse as defined by the nspcc i'm sorry am i confused yeah if you report that to the nspcc or even ask or query about it they ask you to write a letter of complaint to the said establishment or school i have you know so Technically speaking, if you're a child abuser of any kind, you can work as a social worker. 
And if I was to catch you and report you to the police, they all they will do, because I've done this, and believe me, I know this, so please uh, check this information. All they will do is ask you to write a letter of complaint to the local authority, you know. This is disgusting. And even the NSPCC said the same thing. I mean, I do understand that there could be parents that may, you know, be angry at child services for the way that they do things. And I can understand it. Because, to be honest, I'm sure there's thousands of people out there, right? There's 15,000 kids and counting, according to Channel 4, going into care. Oh, that are in care, sorry. And it's the numbers have gone up and up and up since the Conservatives slightly privatised it. Because, of course, if you think about it, if you're a shareholder of a child foster home, yeah, how do you make profit? How do you make profit of a child foster home? How do you... How do you... Um, how do you... Keep your shareholders happy in a profit world with money when your business is children's fostering. Come on. It's sick to think about it, isn't it, really? There's people that are making money by putting children into care. Now, these privatisations have slightly gone into the social services. They've slightly gone into the NHS. They've slightly at us, slightly gone here, slightly gone there. NHS has got um, Alliance written on the letters now and again, if you especially for MRI scans and such, there's little subtle notifications that everything's being slowly privatised for profit, of course. And that means that since the current, do we even call them a cut from them? <laughs> um, I've basically destroyed everything, you know. It's funny, isn't it? You have to laugh at the irony of it, really, don't you? They're not, they're too busy bickering and arguing to come up with a solution. I mean, I'm sure many of you have come up with a solution to the flooding problem. You know, oh, I could do this. Now, like them farmers did, some of you may not know about this, some farmers actually drove all the way across the country at like one mile an hour. Crazy nutters, human beings, spirit in their hearts, bless them, right? drove all across the country just to give some feed to some flooded cows i mean come on if they can do that right if they can do that why can't you why can't i you know i'm doing what i know best sh sharing information just standing up for the rights of people uh, i you know we've all got a gift we've all got a skill and uh, this is just an appeal for that really so check out the money free party on facebook uh, check us out. Um, come and join in the fun. Uh, learn your rights. Learn the law. Because quite often it gets broken by companies, bailiffs, debt collectors. You know, all of the scumbags of society. Not the people. Because they're still, they just want to make a living, don't they? You know, they're just trying to make it, they're just trying to make a living. Please try and make an honest living. Maybe they believe it's good. That, you know, I don't know. But the actual business itself is dirty, isn't it? You know, and there's much of that around. You know, such as child foster care, prisons. The more prisoners you get in a prison, especially in America, this is completely privatised. And slightly so here. Mental health's going that way. So the more mental people, the more sick people, more pharmaceuticals get made. Apparently obesity's rising. There's lots of stuff going on at the moment, that people are worried about. And tax is nothing compared to when your family are getting obese, some of them. And, you know, everyone seems to have diabetes these days for some reason. Why is that? You know, why is that? There's loads of questions we've got to answer, isn't there, really? So anyway, my name's Stuart. Pleased to meet you. Um, and I'm going to say goodbye now because I feel like I'm rambling. So join the Money Free Party. Or stand up for a candidate as yourself as an independent. I'm not trying to persuade you to uh, to any kind of politics. All I all I want to do is give a message of freedom of of of, of goodwill, and that 
one person, you, can make a difference. And I found that out by just doing some small things for myself, you know, standing up for my rights, fighting for justice, um, against government corruption, uh, bankers, greed, war, you know, people, kids starving in the streets while they argue over who done it last time in Parliament. Come on. Do you know that 30% of their time, 30% of their time, and 30 odd percent of the policies in this country are all based on tax. Now, if we didn't have a money free world, all of the leaders and powers of B, if we lived in a money free world, would have 30 percent more time to work on the things that actually matter, such as education, food provision, power, heating, you know, lighting, technologies to uh, enable people to feed themselves. Yeah? Not buy it from a shop. Feed myself. Feed my children. Myself. Yourself. Provide your own electricity. Yourself. The, the technology's there. Most of us can't afford it because it's been well out of, overpriced for that very reason. If we all owned it, we wouldn't have to pay power companies. If we didn't have to pay power companies, the whole oil system would collapse. So, and that whole system is holding up the whole economy and the whole money system and everything that they use to control us. You know? So, we have to do it ourselves. One little step at a time. Build a community garden at your local school. Kickstarter.com. Try it. Yeah? Check out the Money Free Party. Check out the Venus Project. Check out the Zeke Geist Movement. And even check out people like Anonymous because they speak, you know? We're not fugitives. You know, it's just that we want equality in the world. We don't want war and we want everyone to have equal access to resources, to travel, you know, and not, not, not to need, not to need, not to need to not be able to survive at your very core without scrummaging in a dustbin for scraps. I mean, come off it. This is a 21st century, you know. I'm sorry about the anger there. It's It, it bothers me. I'm sure it bothers you too. You know, the, the, these things go on in the world. So we can change it. We've got an opportunity now with a new politics that we can make ourselves. People's politics, yeah? Community politics, right? Where you know what your community needs. I don't. I don't live there. But I know what mine needs. So shouldn't I be running it? Not some dude from Eton that lives in London most of the time. Hmm. Anyway, also quickly, a new change of government. The way it's run completely, right? I actually quite like coalitions. It's a better way of doing things. It's a, it, it, although, although there's some <laughs> ego problems, yeah? In my suggestion, we wouldn't have those problems. And what I would suggest is we keep it really, really simple, yeah? So how do we best serve the people as regards to which party or which, which governance, if you want to call that, because I'm, I'm not the governed ignorant, yeah? I, I check the law and I try to understand it. Which governance is best? Which way is best? Now, I had a thought, I had a good think on this. Now, if you wanted someone to, you know, take charge, make rules and, uh, and govern, you know, for the greater good of you, would you not want the best person for the job? Yeah, that keeps it simple, doesn't it? You know, keep it simple. You change the system simply by voting for the best person for the job. So, um, maybe I've got knowledge and information about disability. I'm a disabled person. I understand how disabled people are. So I've, you know, there are others that have got much more experience than me, of course. So perhaps they'd be better, better at going for it. However, I believe that I might be a reasonable disability uh, equality minister because I've got information I've got life experience, I've got knowledge, the compassion, the understanding. It's the little things like your light switches, how high they should be. It's small, minutia. Like people judging you because of the way you speak, you know, saying that you're angry or aggressive. I have that problem all the time. And it, believe me, it's caused me an absolute nightmare. Yeah. 
Anyway, I have lost track of where I'm going with all of this, so I'm going to say goodbye. Namaste.